Hi, you guys. Welcome to the Vogue, I think, hold on. There we go. Vogue Spring Collection First Impression Review. Um, we are going to be taking a look at all of the new patterns that Vogue has released um, and kind of talk our way through them as if we're like hanging out and uh, looking through the little books at Joanne together. I'm um, just going to talk about just kind of general opinions, fit, fabrication, overall design, just, you know, kind of off the cuff, first thing that comes to mind, which some of you guys comment in the comment section about how funny sometimes this can be. So I will try to make you laugh. Um, actually, I'm not going to try at all. Sometimes I just say weird things and then y'all think that's funny. Okay. So, um, Kicking things off, we have a Mrs. Dress in two lengths. This is a dress with stand collar, yoke, front band at front band at raised waist, front buttons with bias loops, side seam pockets, invisible back zipper in two lengths, and two sleeve options. View A features crosswise grain design for double border prints. Okay. That's a lot of words, Vogue. Um, so we have a stand collar a little shoulder yoke situation gathering here big little gathered big little big gathered sleeves gathering in this like in this waistband i think what they meant by however they described it is that the bottom of the waistband sits at your waistline and normally it's the middle or maybe even the top then you have all these buttons and loops it feels a little bit vintagey to me it feels a little bit like 40s maybe um, I mean, it's cute. This, of course, is very flattering. The under um, bust gathers. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe if it were like, okay, I gotta remember, we're looking at Vogue here, right? So this is not just like your everyday stuff. So maybe if I were going to a special event, a wedding, um, maybe if I were in a wedding, maybe something like this for like one of the bridal events. Um, some really special, like not super formal necessarily, but um, just special occasion. Maybe I would spend the time to do all these gathers and do all these buttons and everything. Let's see the back. Yeah, I mean, it is, it does look designer, right? It looks very high end. There's the back. Okay, so again, oops, sorry. Um, we have the stand collar. You have your invisible zipper. Look how good they do at the matching. Oh, um, your yoke, which you can tell is interfaced, which I guess is good. Um, and then more gathers. There's your waistband again, more gathers. Um, and then our sleeve has two little baby buttons here too. The sleeve might be a little bit big, long and like the opening is big. But yeah, I mean, it is really pretty. Here's the back. I mean, yeah, that's really cute, right? <laughs> it, I'm getting like kind of prairie vibes from the back a little bit. Okay, here are our line drawings. It looks simple enough. It's one of those things, man. Vogue will get you. It'll seem unassuming and then you're like four days in and you're like, how am I still working on this? Um, we do have side seam pockets. No idea if they're anchored. I would hope so. Um, okay. Yes, we went through all of this, all of this fabrics. So view A is intended for double border prints. View B and also A, really, you could interchange those. You're sort of more sturdy cottons, right? Or sturdy wovens, uh, poplin, sateen, linen blends. Yeah, something like kind of, I'm surprised they didn't put like shirtings in there. Something like really crisp, good for the, um, has to be like structured enough for the collar stand and the sleeve gathers, but also like drapey enough to even make a gather. Um, so there's like a, a balance there. Um, but yeah, any of these would be really good. I think sateen would be especially pretty because it has a little bit of a sheen to it, um, but also a little bit of stretch. So that would be nice for this little waistband part. Um, okay, so we do have three, oh, well, four yards of fabric, depending on your size. This one, remember, is cut on the crosswise, so 
keep that in mind. Um, 22 inch zipper, 21 half ball buttons. That's all done by hand. Whew. Um, finished garment measurements they put in here, but where are our regular measurements to compare it to? You know, it's like, um, okay, I guess this is more helpful than the, than only having the body measurement chart, but like the body measurement chart would be nice to have too, to compare. I'm not, I can't tell you anything about ease on this. So this is for the point of this video, at least this is not helpful to us. Um, because I don't know. Uh, this there's no relation you know it's not relative to anything all right yep there are line drawings again okay not off to a terrible start here we have a mrs top loose fitting top has gathered sleeves and button with bias loop closure is feeling very similar to the dress. Um, view A is cropped and has an elastic waist. Okay, front ties and three quarter sleeves with elastic hems. View B has long sleeves, cuffs with the same button and bias loop closure, continuous lap opening and lace trim. I mean, I get that the stand collar is like. A little bit taller on this version but not really on this version I feel like they could have given us all four the two dresses we just saw and this all in one I don't know I guess this does have this little like yokey thing happening here so it is a little bit different but, but they kind of look the same like why wouldn't I just make this into a dress and call it a day I do love uh, these sleeves um, I much prefer these sleeves over the ones on the dress that's for sure um, and then when you start adding in this little bib and this pin tuck detail and the lace, it's very Victorian. And just like in general, like tunic length over a pair of white jeans. I don't know. It feels, it feels kind of out of touch. Like uh, somebody, is somebody really making that to go anywhere? I can't even imagine it in like a special occasion situation. I mean, this one's cute enough, right? It's fine. Come on. There we go. I mean, I think the fabric is really what is kind of carrying this one. The fabric is really pretty in those sleeves. But like, I don't know. Normally I can kind of like pinpoint like what is not landing for me personally. Sometimes it's the fabric choice. The color even sometimes is off. I think this one's just the design feels like, I guess maybe a little costumey. I just can't imagine myself wearing this to any occasion. And I'm somebody who typically likes to like turn up the volume on fashion and design and all of that. Um, I'm not, I'm not kind of a plain Jane girl. So all of these extra frills aren't what's making me nervous. It's just the frills, them, like what the frills are and all of them together. I don't know. It feels like a lot. Okay. Probably not my favorite. <laughs> Loose fitting top. Oh, we already did that. Okay. Um, fabrics, poplin, lightweight broadcloth, lawn, and chalet. Yeah, I think that the the yellow version is probably the broadcloth or maybe even lawn, and then the floral version is probably a chalet or a rayon poplin or something. I guess if I, I'm trying to think, if I saw that girl walking down the street, I'd be like, I w it's not ugly. It's just not, I don't know the word, memorable. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't pinpoint what it is about this one. It's just, something's just off about it. Something's just not like landing well. <laughs> um, okay, so the cropped version is two-ish yards. The longer version is almost three you need two and one eighth yards of elastic 
and 10 buttons for view A. That's where the sleeve, the elastic is for the sleeves and the waist. And then a bunch of lace trim, more lace trim, and 29 buttons. <laughs> Good grief. Um, and then again, finished garment measurements, but that's not super helpful to me without the actual body chart measurements. Gosh, I, I think I want to like it more, especially this pretty florally version, because I do love that fuchsia color. But um, but yeah, no, I'm not I'm not digging it. All right, let's keep a positive attitude as we move through these, right? Not, not one is gonna determine the entire collection. This is a skirt. This is a full asymmetric skirt cut cross grain. Has draped side split, faced hem, waistband, invisible back zipper, and length variations. Okay, I think it's gonna be a little hard to tell exactly what's happening here until maybe the back will tell more, but it just looks like you've taken some fabric, almost like a curtain, and just wrapped it around you and put a waistband on it. This deep hem, this is the hem facing that they're talking about, so the hem facing is probably like three or so inches, but it kind of is reading a little bit, yeah, like drapery. And you can see down here too, the more of the facing, you can see how that's kind of done. Um, Oh, move your freaking arm. So it looks like it comes to the side seam and then kind of does a cascade situation. There's the invisible zipper. Yeah, I can't tell how it is sewn into the waistband because of all of these arms and elbows. Um, but it looks like it might be like turned back on itself. And this here might even get sewn into this side seam too. That's what kind of creates a bit more of the volume that and having the hem band all through here as well that's some pretty decent print matching right yeah so here's the drawing it does look like it's sewn completely into the side seam there I don't know it's a little bit I don't mind that it's different and unique I, I like different and unique maybe the structured fabric of the painterly one this one I think they're trying to make that like a little bit prom-y, like gown-like, right? That feet, this feels like some kind of satin or something, right? Some kind of heavyweight fabric. I think, and this one is definitely got some sheen to it. So it's definitely a special kind of occasion fabric. But I think if we were to go the opposite direction into something a little bit lighter weight, it might be, it might read a little bit less it would read a little bit less like funky and more just kind of pretty. Um, but yeah, they're recommending all super structured fabrics. So fail, Mikado, Ankara, um, satin. The only thing that would have even a little bit of drape to it is this linen blends. Um, so you can try like a cotton linen blend, um, some, some crinkle cotton, something. I don't know that I would recommend like a chalet or something super lightweight, but something lighter weight than those special occasion fabrics, I think would give it a little bit more just wearability without it seeming so unique, without it seeming so um, purposefully unique, you know? Um, okay, so three yards for the long one. Oh, is it also, it can't be fully interfaced. That doesn't make any sense, but you need almost three yards of interfacing. So I'm assuming the waistband for sure, but are they also interfacing the hem band? I mean, not a terrible idea to give it the structure that you want to create this situation. And of course through here, it would create like a really kind of like that. Um, oh Lord, I might remember the name of it. That stuff you put in your hem. That's like a, like a mesh or a webbing or something, web, web, hem, web, something. Um, and it creates those kind of like big, nice, pretty, voluminous um, folds in, in your hem. It like it pushes your skirt out um, and 
kind of creates those nice folds in it. It does make for a really beautiful skirt. Maybe this skirt is just meant to be a little bit fancier. In which case, I'm a little bit upset that they paired it with, like, bodysuits. Especially this one. This feels like this girl and this girl are going to two different things. I mean, that's just a blue tank top. So maybe that's what's also throwing me off about this one, too. Man, we're kind of over three here. I hate that. I'm sorry, you guys. I do genuinely try to like them when I can. But I'm also not, I'm not good at lying. Like, I'm not a good liar. So you would be able to tell if I were, like, faking liking something. Oh, I don't know that this is going to get any better. Okay, here we go. This is a top. Okay. L uh, yeah. Lined empire waist tops are close fitting through bust and have deep V neck bodice with princess seams. Bow baby hems, invisible zipper at center back, and narrow strap across upper back. View A is sleeveless and has gathered neckline ruffle. View B has balloon sleeves with stay. Okay. So, empire waist. I think it might even come up a little bit. This little bow thing. I do, and I like bows. I'm a bow girl. Um, and bows have been making their way back onto runways like the designer designers like you know high-end people are putting bows on things again so you know it's not that it's out of touch with with fashion trends or anything like that maybe it's this bow <laughs> i don't know i don't know i don't hate i don't hate this version. I wish it were a dress. I think I would like it a lot more lengthened into a dress, almost like, you know, trapeze style, tent style dress with this really pretty neckline for like, you know, a birthday or like an engagement, a bachelorette type of thing. Something girly, fun, frilly, you know, lighthearted kind of event. Um, but I don't see myself making this and putting it on with my khakis and heading over to Target. You know? Again, it's not a... I should start with like a ranking with numbers. Would that be helpful? Um, whereas like the last... I say that the second dress was like a three. The last one was a five. This one's a six. You know, if I had to rank them and put them, like, on a scale of how much I like them. It comes down to, like, can I imagine myself in this somewhere? Like, where would I wear this? What occasion would this fit into my life? And granted, obviously, my lifestyle is different than yours. But can you envision yourself in this somewhere? Can you can you put on a black mini skirt and, and a little clutch and head out for a date night in this? I don't think so. That feels... That feels, no, no. Okay, so here's the back with the little strap going across. That's probably simply just for the weight of the sleeves or the weight of those ruffles on the other version to keep the sleeves up on your shoulder. It also makes it harder to get into because you have to slip your head through this thing and the other thing, but not this. <laughs> and then, um, you know, zip it up. Yeah, again, I don't hate this one, but I don't know that I'm going to be investing my time in it. I mean, I've got a lot of patterns, you guys, um, and I just know I have more that I like better than this. The line drawings are kind of really adorable, but that the bow on the on the printed version doesn't translate. It doesn't look like this. Maybe if they used a different fabric, a more structured one on that version, it would be different. Um... And this does look pretty close, but I almost wonder what it would be like if they swapped them and did this one in the drapey fabric and this one in the structured fabric, how that would have looked. I know that you guys had, that had looked at this collection already saw this and thought Lindsay's going to love this. So maybe it's me. Maybe it's like, I don't know, 
something's I'm just like in a mood or something because <laughs> by all intents and purposes if like on paper I'm supposed to love this but I don't know it just didn't it's not landing for me what is happening <laughs> poplin broadcloth and Kara again so those really structured fabrics and then for B they're recommending they aren't recommending a different fabric for B even though V B very much was in a not in any of these fabrics. Maybe a rayon poplin, but not a cotton poplin. I don't know what B was made from, but it's definitely not broadcloth or Ankara. I mean, that has so much drape in it. Huh. Not fooling me. I don't know what that is. Not one of those three, that's for sure. So we are coming in at... So a lot of lining, actually. So you have to get, I thought this was the fa the main fabric yardage. No. Um, one and three quarters lining plus three and a half yards of fashion fabric. This is for a top. But I wonder if you did lengthen it to a dress. It'd obviously be a mini dress, right? Well, I guess you could go to the floor. Um... You probably wouldn't have to buy that much more fashion fabric, depending on how you tall you are and where your height is distributed. You might even be able to get away with just an additional half yard. So it wouldn't be that much more expensive to make it a whole outfit. That's, I don't know. That's kind of like how I justify <laughs> making things into dresses. That's why I have so many dresses because it's like, it's just so much easier to just make one thing and not have to think about pairing it with anything else. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, that's just a little bit of like fashion math, I guess. Okay, now we have, this feels very Vogue, right? Um, very unwearable for most people, but <laughs> but a Vogue pattern nonetheless. This is an off-the-shoulder double-breasted line jacket, close-fitting through bust, has boning, fully interfaced body and long sleeves, semi-fitted high-rise pants, have flared legs, invisible back zipper, hook and eye, separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. Okay. So they probably saw this on some celebrity at some point um, and recreated it. Again, it's for an occasion, right? Like you're not wearing this to the office or to Target or to church. Um, like it's like a maybe like an office event because it's kind of like business but also fun. Um, or an event where you're like want to be represented as like, you know strong and bossy and like you know like I'm double breasted coke kind of girl but it's an event it's a special occasion for sure it is really pretty really cool um if I ever I've never been to an event like this to begin with and I don't foresee myself getting into some kind of life where that those kinds of events would become commonplace for me. <laughs> so I don't see this one in my future, but there are plenty of us out there, plenty of you guys out there who sew and also attend these types of events where this could be a showstopper. There's no doubt if you showed up in an event with this on and told people that you made it on top of that, you, I mean, best dressed for sure. So this one gets a nine, right? Like on, the, on my little scale that I just made up. Um, not, a, not a 10 just because I'm not going to buy it, but I won't be mad at you if you buy it. Those other ones, I, well, I'm not gonna be mad at you if you buy the other ones. I'm just gonna be like, tell me more. Like, what do you see in this? <laughs> Help me see your vision. A lot of times that does happen too, where I get on Instagram and someone's posted like a, like their finished version of something that I was kind of like on the fence about. And I'm like, dang, they actually really did make that really cute or wearable or like I can totally see that now. Um, so I always stand to be corrected. But now the pants. Because, you know, $5.99 at Joanne every now and again is worth it for a nice pair of pants. These are a flare pant. I love that they don't have a, a zip. I mean, they don't have a zip, but not a fly. Um, I love how they're clean in the front and then just have, you know, the simple one little dart in the back. Well, one on each side. 
that to me seems like something I would, I might actually buy this pattern and make those pants because I don't, those pants feel very wearable. I don't see them in a lot of other patterns. I don't remember seeing patterns like that. Um, so in that regard, it's kind of unique to this pattern. And I can imagine in a lot of different fabrics too. I love a flare. I mean, anybody who's a pear shape, you guys know, like there's something about putting on a pair of flares that I just come alive. <laughs> okay. So wool blends, medium weight crepe, linen blends, jacquard. Yeah. If you're, if you're going suiting for sure, if you're just going to make the pants, um, you could also like, I mean, you could also make this kind of really interesting if you went the opposite direction of like suiting business and you did it out of denim. I mean, now we're talking about, okay, I actually might wear that on like, if I went to a girl's trip to Nashville or something, still very special and very specific, but more in the realm of possibility for me than the other. Like just looking at these line drawings, can't you see it out of like a stretched denim with like matching denim pants and like real big sparkly buttons? Okay, I know I'm changing some minds out there. <laughs> I can hear all of your wheels like cranking. Um, okay, so the jacket itself is less than two yards, which might seem surprising, but you know, because it's a peplum, which are peplums are coming back too. So um, it's just chopped up a bunch, you know, but then there's lining and interfacing. So, you know, it gets up there. And then your pants are a little more than two and a half for the largest size. It also goes from eight to 26, you know, that's, I don't talk about Vogue sizing a lot because it's usually not impressive. Um, but this is one of the best I've seen going up to a 26. We don't have any finished garment measurements for me to talk that through anymore, but, um, but yeah, 20, going up to a 26, well, an eight also is impressive, like on both sides of the spectrum of body inclusivity. Um, this is representative as best as Vogue has ever done before. Can they do better? Yes, but this is an improvement. So I'm kind of happy to see that actually. Um, so five buttons, three yards of boning and an invisible zipper for the jacket and a hook and eye. Okay. Okay. Rede redemption for sure for this collection. That's going to be one that stands out in my mind. Um, especially those pants. Okay, now we have a skirt. Uh, In-house design. Yep, okay. Fitted skirt has raised waist, waist facings, side front and back seams. Side front and back seams. Okay, I think that means like the princess seam thing. Center back slot zipper, stitched hems. The UA has contrast overlays with top stitching and purchased eyelet tape with lacing. View B has front band and eyelets with lacing. Okay, so here they are trying to hop on the corseting trend. Um, and this might, for those of you that are my age, maybe a little bit older, might take you back and feel very much um, Victoria's Secret circa 2000. Or who remembers Newport News? Okay, leave a comment letting me know. Do you remember Newport News? Did you ever buy anything from them? And is this not like a dead on dupe for a 2002 Newport News catalog? <laughs> um, so yeah, it, again, the corseting trend, the lace up, all of that kind of, I don't want to say bondagey type of stuff, but you know, that realm of things um, is what they're calling on here. It's a beautiful skirt. The waist, um, facing with the waist stays all impeccable. You know, you're going to get a good quality, beautiful skirt if you make this. And if you've never done the eyelet tape before, it is actually really cool. Um, so if you maybe wanted to learn something new, not the end of the world, not hard to do, not impossible by any means. Um, and then this is the, the side panels that they're talking about. Oh, this one, they even left the ties. The So these things lace up, obviously, and then they left them really long to, so like, dangle. That's kind of cool. A little bit of, like, a nod to fringe. I mean, I can see myself in this for, like, a date or, like, a 
New York City trip or something. I mean, that's, I mean, they made that one even kind of casual. I could see myself not maybe going to Target in it, but definitely like a cute lunch. Okay, here's the back. So this is too what they were talking about with the overlay. So they have this, um, and then the tape, and then, yeah, side seams, and then your center, your side panels become your tape. And then this is the flap zipper. Is that what they called it? Flap zipper? I can never remember what these are called off the top of my head, so maybe this will help me remember. Because it's not a lapped zipper. That's different. Um, but, yeah. And then this one doesn't have any. And you can obviously put the eyelet tape, or the, yeah, the, what are they called? Grommet tape, eyelet tape on here, if you wanted that, without the little zigzaggy thing. Look at that, though. Dang. Kind of cool, right? Again, not for everybody. I get that. But at least it's... It's not so far into the, like, designer category that it feels unwearable for anybody other than a celebrity. Or someone that just, like, really, really, really pushes the envelope on fashion. This feels wearable. Um, slot zipper. Slot zipper. Help me remember that. A slot zipper. Okay. Okay. Um, twill satin and medium weight denim. Mm hmm The denim might be kind of cool, actually, if you left this raw and did, like, a frayed edge or something. That might be kind of cool, too. Hmm. Um, so the skirt's not going to take much fabric, but this is where you're going to spend all your money. Um, so you need a zipper, five and a half yards of eyelet tape, 17 and a half yards of corset lacing. I don't know what that costs per yard, but... Even if it's like 50 cents, it adds up. Um, then 10 corset lace tips, which are kind of like the, the stops on the end of the cords. Um, 56 eyelets. Four yards of corset lacing and two corset lace tips for B. So it looks like B, the eyelets are done individually. And then for A, it's the course, it's the eyelet tape which is probably why they had to make it in black because I can't imagine eyelet tape comes in a ton of different colors. But this one, you're literally like hammering 56 eyelets. Wow. Commitment. Commitment. Okay. And so this is a six to 24. So the same number of sizes, the same quantity of sizes, just one size smaller than the last one we looked at. And that'll take us to a hip of 51 and a half from 36 to 51 and a half finished. And this is a close fitting garment. So that's close to what the, the body measurement chart would be anyways, I would think. Yeah. Okay. I like this one. Another nine, another nine. All right. Now we've got this shirt dress, another in-house design. I'm surprised we haven't seen a designer pattern yet. Maybe they saved them all for the end. Button front, A-line dress, loose fitting through bust, has drop shoulders, collared neckband, patch pocket, side slits, and length variations. Long sleeves have concealed button closure along under seam and button cuffs. Oh, would you look at that? This is a button band. So you can make it into a cape type of thing or button it up and have a sleeve. What do we think of that? I don't, it's interesting. It's not like unwearable. It's not that like crazy, but is it, is it, I don't know. Does it feel broken? Like if I hadn't read that to you and then pointed that out, would you be like her sleeve ripped? It's not crazy, but is it weird? Do you understand the difference between the two of those? Like, is it odd, strange, or is it like 
that's so interesting, it's actually kind of cool. The shortened version, the little mid-thigh version, same deal. I like this one because it feels like you took your, <laughs> you took your, like, gigolo from Miami, his little silk shirt, you took it off the back of the chair from the wild night you had together, and you put it on and wore it as a dress, right? It's like the, the sexier, slinkier, dirtier version of like a men's, <laughs> men's, women wearing men's wear <laughs> because it is drapey and slinky and oversized, right? I mean, it, it's long on her sleeve and the shoulder drops down. And so it's giving that like, I'm wearing a shirt that's so many sizes bigger than I am. But it's not like, it's not like the banker's button up. No, 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 no. This is the, this is the nightclub owner's shirt. <laughs> Oh, what was I in another life, you guys? I have no idea. Probably a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so probably, yeah, not my style, but I can see someone wearing this and it being super, super chic. Um, and this one, I probably would wear this one, actually. Maybe not in that psychedelic print. I, mean, I think you could tone down, like, the, the you know, gigolo quality of it. Um, and with a different print or even a solid, like imagine that like in a champagne color or black. Um, and all of a sudden it's looking very, very chic and not so, not so sweaty. <laughs> yeah, there's a good picture of the sleeve. Thank you very much for this. It's like deconstructed, but I think in like, a, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's weird. Okay. But in a cool way, not weird in a ugly way, weird in a cool way. That's my vote. So I give this an eight. This one gets an eight, right? You look at the, the line drawings and they don't seem that, you know, even especially this one, this just seems like a cute little shirt dress. But when you put it in that psychedelic colorful print, um, in that silky type fabric, it can go it can go a lot of different directions, this one especially. This one, I mean, they put it in that yellow, like, structured cotton. Um, I'd stay away from, like, white and neutrals because you can be, like, insane asylum, like, uh, straight jacket. Like, we can go that direction really easily. Um, but this in a print, I think, would also be really cool. Maybe, like, a smallish oversized I mean, a smallish, like, ditzier type of print? I don't know. Or maybe, like, a, um, a picture in more, like, a traditional shirting. Like, think of, like, a men's shirt with, like, the pinstripes. Um, or any kind of, like, stripe. I think that could be really cool in. Yeah, now I'm seeing it. That I see a lot. That I, that I can visualize actually, like, yeah, wearing that a lot. I can see myself in that. And something like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the blue and white, you know, the, the, the sort of traditional men's button up shirt fabric, that kind of shirting. The, um, pattern calls for poplin, linen blends, shirting, and sateen. Again, I don't know where the, these, this is definitely drapier. I thought that that was going to be some kind of like silky type. Um, but you can find poplins that are lighter weight and drapey. So maybe that's what they're using. Um, fabric requirements. Yeah. Almost three yards for a B of course has more than four. Um, 24 buttons, 24 buttons. That will be a fun day. Um, and pretty roomy all around. I can tell just from these numbers. Um, but six to 24 on this one as well. Maybe, too, if you shorten that to, like, a midi length, that would help, too. Just cut, it's, like, a lot. Okay. Enough about that one. Mrs. Dress and Tunic by Sandra Betsina. Okay, here we go with some designers. Um, Sandra is known for funky shapes and applique. Funky shapes and, like, pattern mixing and print mixing and, like, a bunch of different little pieces all put together somehow. Um, very artistic. 
uh, cleat, front, A-line dress or tunic has back yoke. Dress has side seam pockets, contrast collar and cuffs, hem facings. Tunic has sla uh, lantern sleeves, contrast upper sleeves, yoke lining, and hem facing stitched to the outside. Purchased fringe trim. Okay. Okay. What is that? Is that a it looks like a hair clip, but I think it's, I don't know what that is. Maybe it says in the notions. But here's your little fringe trim. It's kind of like a crossover. You know, you've made this little v-neck um, tunic type thing before. Uh, this one, this fold is accidental. It's not intended to be there, which with Sandra, you have to double check because she does funky things like this, but looking on this one. And she also does asymmetrical things, so it could be one or the other, but I do think that this is just folded in on itself in a funny way because um, I don't see it really over here. Um, and then you have your lantern sleeve, again, with just, you know, the different prints and the trims and the hems and all of that kind of stuff. And then this one looks to be actually pretty tame for Sandra. All she really did was put this contrast um, neck band and sleeve band on there. But I still, I'm dying to know what this is. Right? Really pretty. And I can see a lot of women in that. I mean, it is like, um, it, it doesn't feel very like young and youthful to me and th that's okay. Uh, I like it. It feels mature in a way that's very like thoughtful. Like I'm a mature woman, but I care what I wear and what I look like. And I put a lot of time and thought and effort into my clothes. Um, even though it's still kind of like not got a ton of shape to it, it's not something that you just threw on to cover up your body. You know, it's, it's very intentional. Um, so I like that about it a lot. Yeah. Here's our back yoke. Oh, you can see it really well there. Okay. So line drawing wise, this one is not giving. First of all, it has floppy pockets, which those would immediately be gone if I were making this. It doesn't have whatever that thing that is that a hair, did they accidentally leave a hair clip on her dress? Is that what happened? I mean, I'm not the only one who's seeing that, right? What I mean, why is that there? It's not part of the design. It wasn't in the line drawing. I don't know what that is. Is it sunglasses that's like turn the eye parts are on the inside of it I don't know I don't know what that is but it's definitely not drawn in here um so yeah this is just kind of lackluster but in the in the drape of the fabric that they chose it looked really pretty and I mean can you imagine this guy's take five seconds to sew two seconds to cut it's really two three pat pattern pieces at most and then this, which doesn't even feel like the same thing at all. <laughs> it's just like, how resist these two things in the same pattern? But I guess because of the neckline and the drop shoulder and everything that happens below that is really just, you know, small little details. Most of the bulk of the, 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 the pattern drafting, I guess, comes in this bodice part. So, hey, make something for yourself and something for your mom or vice versa. Okay, so heavyweight rayon crepe. Yeah, that is what I kind of feel like those other garments were made from, like a heavier weight but still drapey fabric. Um, three or four ply silk or drapey knits even, for sure. Now, how those fabrics and this one, that there's got, no. That is not a three or four ply silk Neither is that. They, those things have structure in them. So I don't know why they're skimping on telling you what to make for view B or what to use for view B. They should have a separate fabric section for B. Um, Sandra also does her own, own sizing thing. So it's always A through J. I don't know what any of it means. I've never made one before, but they're all in one envelope, which is nice. Um, and then steam a seam and just your fringe like you don't really need a lot of notions at all which also makes me believe whatever that thing is was an accident for sure how did that happen who knows i mean maybe if it were like an actual 
if it were sunglasses and they had the, the eye part on front, it would be like, oh, they just did that for like styling purposes. But I don't know what that thing is, the loop-de-loop -loop thing. It's, it's right there. It's definitely there too. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay. Yeah, that one was, that one's decent. I give that one a good 7.5. I can see myself making that dress. That dress is one of, is going to be a sleeper pattern. You know, it's going to be one of those that nobody's going to pick up and nobody's going to buy, but until we see that one person online on Instagram or wherever who's made it and raves about how comfortable it is, and then everybody's going to be running out to get their own. So get yours now. Go ahead and make one up. It's wearable pajamas, and it's 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 cute. The drapey fabric is is critical for that one, though. Okay, so now we've got this dress from Julio Cesar. Yep, he's very much known for um, asymmetry, not asymmetry, but um, what's this called? A mm, 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 mm. like handkerchief him. He does that a lot. He does a lot with volume. Um, he like plays with juxtaposition, which I guess the fit and flare probably makes sense. He makes... He makes really beautiful Upper East Side type of clothes. Um, very much like Blair Waldorf's mom. Uh, I guess Mrs. Waldorf. I don't remember her actual name. Helen or something. Um, so, yeah. she. This girl's got money, right? She's going to lunch in this. Like, she's. this is not a special occasion. This is like... Just any every day. And she's wearing those heels all across the streets of New York. That's what I'm picturing anyways. Um, line dress with bias cut bodice, which is how you're able to get this really cool stripe situation happening. Um, twisted strap detail and very loose fitting draped skirt. Dress includes invisible side zipper and side seam pockets. Oh, it's like the bodice becomes the twisted sleeve thing. That's interesting. And then a waistband. And then your skirt, which I hope we'll be able to see more about how this is done um, in the line drawings. But it almost looks like it's a bubble hem. Like, this is definitely two layers here. Very interesting, very pretty. You know, some, some celebrity would wear this to like a daytime talk show or something. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it's just a circle skirt with some kind of cut, special cut to the hem to make it do this little thing. But I think it's double layered. I think this is like not even just lined. It's like sewn down here and turned up under itself and then there's two layers right because you couldn't see like in here like that's one side of the fabric and this is the other side yeah it very much looks like that's a fold right there but that's a seam. Yeah, I don't know. This is really interesting. It's kind of fun to look at, right? Sometimes these are designer ones. are not super hard to replicate on your own, like pattern hacking. And then sometimes you look at them and you're like, yeah, no, I have no idea. Maybe I could go to the um, Joanne and get the, the instructions and look at the, the pattern pieces. You know, how they have them, like, not the not the tissue, but like the instruction booklet, how they have all the pieces for like your cutting layouts and stuff and then make heads or tails of it. But even still, I would be like probably a little bit confused. It's cool. Um, so linen blends, cotton shirting and poplin and then horizontal stripe fabric. If you want to like, you know, do how they did with all the fun stripes, which I think really did play up sort of the interestingness of it. Um, probably at, oh my gosh, almost 10 yards of fabric. So that skirt is definitely th somehow two ply, two, two layers, somehow, some way. I don't, I can't remember the last time I saw a dress that was almost 10 yards of fabric that wasn't like 
a, a, a costume or like a, you know, something from like the, what am I trying to say? The, um, uh, the historical type of patterns, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't think of what they're called. Um, but yeah, wow. Okay. So maybe you can find some less expensive poplin somewhere. Jeez. Well, I told you she was rich. I told you she had money. And even the homemade version of her has to have money. <laughs> okay, this, I did get a little accidental sneak peek of this. And that maybe that's why starting out this video, I was a little bit negative. Because I was going in thinking we were going to get a lot more of this. Which feels very up-to-date, youthful, modern, on-trend, all of that, and that other stuff, I don't even know. So, maybe now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Um, but this is the blazer dress with peak lapels, top stitching on side front seams, long two-piece sleeves, you know I love a two-piece sleeve, with button trim, and shoulder pads. Uh, so far, it's a blazer right? But then the dress features a button closure at the waistband, concealed button closure on the skirt, waist cutouts, side seam pockets, and length variations. So this feels like maybe in the same way that that other like businessy type of, remember the off the shoulder blazer double breasted thing? Like that woman and this woman could be the same and going to different events. Or this could just be someone who has a job that's a little bit less, like a little bit loose on the, the dress code. Um, like someone in marketing or PR or somewhere along those lines. Uh, maybe even depending on what city you live in, you can get away with something like this. I feel like you could probably wear this to work if you worked at Vogue magazine in New York City, for example. Um, something along those lines. If you worked in a nightclub even and were like a cocktail waitress, do they, don't they wear nicer things, right? In black. Um, but yeah, this feels very wearable to me in more situations than that other one. Um, but it's really cool, really cute. I can see myself in this. Um, it wouldn't be something I reached for every day. Um, but definitely for like, I mean, it feels appropriate for like a 41st birthday, right? Yeah, why not? Um, but I think that this is all open, right? There's nothing keeping this closed until here. And then there's buttons concealed under here as well, which I think visually gives it such an interesting, like, like how is that staying on kind of look? Um, I will say the shoulders seem a little bit long. Right? I feel like it could be a lit, like maybe an inch shorter on her. Maybe this one they're trying to like accentuate the shoulders, like back in the 80s kind of situation. So it doesn't look so bad here. But for some reason, this, maybe the angle of the camera, I don't know. But I quite like this one. It feels youthful, but, but like anybody could wear it. And you can tell she's happy, even though she is very young, but you can tell she looks happy. Yeah, I mean, cute, right? Let us see the back. Yeah, okay, well, maybe the back is where we take a bit of a turn. That is not... That doesn't look great, does it? That looks really weird. Hmm... And I don't know, man, um, it went from appropriate for lots of things to now this feels risque. This feels like a one more inch and you're at the crack. But I don't know how... I don't know how else you would do it unless you mimicked this application. However, they did this. If you did that same thing to the back. So this was being pulled up and this was being kind of tacked down. 
I guess I don't mind so much that this is loose. That's okay, but this low back, this like tramp stamp, stamp zone feels personal. Like that to me, that feels more sexy than like cleavage, right? I mean, that's like a sexy zone. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's too big on her. I think it fits her fine. Um, I just think there's not, there's nothing holding it up but her butt. So maybe you could put elastic in there too. Maybe that would help um, kind of keep it up a little bit. And elastic here would help keep this against the back, which I think would help. Ideally, I'd like this to sit against the back. This does feel maybe too big through here. Like you could have taken out a big chunk through the center back seam. Um, but some elastic here in this waist to kind of hold it up a little bit. But I can see the, the younger you are, I can see you being like, no, 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 that's totally fine. But to me, I would be like, I would feel so uncomfortable in that. Okay, this is much better. How did that happen? I don't know. But okay, if I'd seen this first, I wouldn't have freaked out as much. I don't, some, some discrepancy between the two. I'm not entirely sure. I thought they were the same girl, but maybe they're not. Um, but yeah, this looks a lot better. So whatever you have to do to make it do this, just let it do this. That's cool. That looks cool in the back. And I, again, I don't really mind that this is like billowing away. I might nip and tuck here and there to take a little bit of that volume out, but it's fine. Yeah, super cute. I really like that. So we've got medium weight wools, gabardine, linen blends, twill. Yeah, more of your, again, like your suiting type of stuff. But twill is one of those things that comes in a myriad of colors and weights and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't have to be as suit-like as you would think. You can have like a cotton twill and it'd be kind of a little bit more casual. Okay, cool. That one gets a 10. Well, 9.5 because of that weird fitting issue. Okay, so now we've got a corset, which... At this point, you guys are used to seeing the crop top corsets, right? Like them or not, we're here. They're here, right? This is what we're doing now. Um, close fitting corset top has fully interfaced body, boning, sweetheart neckline, hook and eye front closure, and contrast knit. I'm digging in the back. And then view A has above elbow length sleeves. View B has long sleeves. Separate pattern pieces for cup sizes. So that's probably where I think we went wrong in some of the other corset patterns we looked at, especially in like McCall's and, you know, some of the other brands is that there weren't cup sizes. So if you weren't like a B cup, like you were going to have to be doing some serious work to fix it. Um, I think these are attached also. So it's not strapless, but it looks like a strapless top with like a shrug, but it's all one. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. This feels like that same pant from before. Terrible fit on both girls, honestly. But, right, it's that no fly, flat front, simple flare pant, which makes me want those pants, that pants pattern even more. Anyways, back to the corset top. So you have your, you know, it's like undergarments, but outer garments. And then you can put a little lace here. I actually do quite, I have a lot of like laces. I never know what to do with them because I'm not really a lace person, but maybe, a, well, now that I'm saying the words lace shrug, that feels wrong. <laughs> like I shouldn't, those two things don't belong together. Not in my wardrobe. That feels very like mother of the bride. And I'm not a mother or a bride. Let us see the back. Oh, no, those are like a legging. But even still, you get the idea. If they flared out at here, right down to here, you'd be like, they'd be the exact same. Oh, I see. So it kind of just like tucks in almost. It doesn't, but it's what it looks like. Interesting. Some, are they Calvin Klein pants? I guess so. They couldn't, they didn't take that little thing off. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I kind of like it. What do you guys think? I think in the right 
fabrics, which I don't think they did a bad job picking fabrics for this. I mean, the, the animal print black one feels a little bit like, again, going back to Newport News, feels very Newport News-like to me. Um, very Victoria's Secret back in the day. Um, like, trying too hard sexy. Like, it's already a crop top corset. We don't need to add animal print into it. Um, and then the pink one with the lace, that's obviously a little bit sweeter. But it also limits where you could wear it. So I think if you did a little bit of, of thought, of thinking about fabrication, where you would actually wear it, what kind of events, is it just for date night? Is it for girls night? Is it for the club? Is it for Target? You know, you could come up with some cool ideas. Again, denim is one that jumps out at me. Let's see what some of the other fabric recommendations are. Satin brocade and jacquard for the corset. And then 35% stretch. Thank you for putting the percentage on here. I don't know if that's unique to Vogue. Uh, wait, I don't know if that's a new thing to Vogue since I've been complaining about it and the other brands um, or Vogue has always done that. I can't remember, but Ponty, Jersey, Stretch Lace. Um, I think you could have a lot of fun. Like, you know how denim and lace are like, that's like, isn't that like a Carrie Underwood song or something? Anyways, there it's like classic, right? That could be like a lot of fun or like denim and eyelet or like, um, or like if you wanted to go into like the brocade satiny realm, um, thinking about if you wanted to make it more casual or keep it that dressy and just find the balance between the two pieces, whether they're juxtaposed or they match. I think you can make some really, really cool versions of this for sure. Yeah, I'm giving this one a nine. I really like this one. Yeah, for sure. And I like how the kids are wearing clothes these days where they have these like really dressy tops and they literally put them on with baggy pants, baggy jeans. Um, not my favorite look, but it's certainly one way to dress something down. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. This one's cool. Okay. I feel like we're, we've hit a stride here. We've been doing pretty good. This might take me over the edge. Mrs. Top and skirts. This view a, Okay, I have thoughts already. Um, tops have drop shoulder, collar, collar band, front and bunt closure, link variations. View A is cropped and has darts. Ties that wrap around the waist, long sleeves with button cuffs and placket. View B has short sleeves, stitched hems, and side slits. Bias cut skirts, bias cut skirts, okay, are fitted through hip and have waist ties, invisible side zipper closure, and hook and eye. I remember watching the Oscars not too long ago and... Well, it was the Vanity Fair after party. You guys might have seen this photo because it was very um, polarizing. Some people loved it. Some people didn't. I don't even know who the girl is. I don't remember her name. I don't even remember what show she's in, honestly. But she wore a, like a, like an off-white champagne-colored bias-cut skirt just like this with the like little baby hem and everything with that like feather top. It was literally like a feather across her nipples and that was it. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, okay, obviously the feather is like, tr you know, we're trying to make it into something, but that skirt is so perfect in so many ways. And the fact that it can go from red carpet to the boardroom, I mean, bias cut skirts, especially the silky type fabric are very like nineties, two thousands, but the way that this is done with this like matching top, I don't know that this is one of the ones where it does not fit into my lifestyle currently, but I want to live the life where it does. <laughs> so I'd be willing to change my life for this outfit. <laughs> for the other ones, I was like, no, I don't want to be the Upper East Side girl. I want to be the girl, like, I guess you'd be in like Florida or the Caribbean or Spain, or Europe, right? It's very, it's very cool. 
and looks exceptional. A bias cut skirt, I've said this a thousand times, I don't care what size you are, I don't care how many lumps and bumps you have, what quote unquote problem area you have, bias cut skirts and dresses look good on everyone. Everyone. Especially when you buy them in these silky types and and there's the drape of the body. I'm, I'm prom I promise, promise, promise. If you don't believe me, buy one off of Amazon or somewhere and try it on and then return it. Um, or keep it because you love it so much. But, you know, try a ready-to-wear one first before you commit to making one on your own because it does take a, quite a bit of fabric. But, man, this is cool. This is really cool. This is, this is... I don't, this is an 11, but I don't have anywhere to wear it. So it's a one because <laughs> I'm mad. Oh, I mean, even that one with like the non crop top, I don't even know that I'd have anywhere to wear that. I guess I should get the, get it for the skirt. That skirt is so freaking cool. It's like pretty and sexy and sweet. It's all the things all at once. It's really just perfect. Look at the, look at that skirt, how it's fitting her body. That's incredible. And not because she's a model. Like the fabric is doing all the work there. It's so good. All right. Well, I'm definitely getting the skirt, getting this for the skirt then. So we'll take it back up to a nine and I'll just keep it at a nine since I can't justify that crop top. I guess I could make the top and wear it with jeans, but wearing them together feels like I'd have to go back on like a big vacation to pull that off somewhere. And I don't typically like to make things for just one event. That feels just as, I might as well just go buy ready to wear. It's just as wasteful. Okay. So Charmeuse, Rayon Crepe, Chalet, Crepe Back Satin. Yeah. All of those. Um, Fabric requirements, the top, the long sleeve top is two yards, one and five eighths for B. And then the skirts, oh, actually you can get away with not that much fabric for the skirts. That's even more impressive because they're cut on the bias and there's only, I mean, there's a front and a back. I thought it would take more than that, but I guess not. Skirt C, you can even make out of 45 inch fabric. And D, you have to use 60 because it's so long. But, of course, I like D the best. All right. Buttons, buttons, invisible zipper, hook, and eye. Cute. Super, super, super cool. Um. Oh, we're in our last few here. Okay, we've got a little athleisure set. Knit top and leggings in two lengths. Where are the designers? I hope this isn't like indicative of a bigger, like a sign uh, that more designers are pulling out of home sewing. Why would they do that? That's so mean. <laughs> it was like one of the redeeming qualities for these high end fashion design houses. I mean, they used to have like Christian Dior and stuff and that all went away. And so then we got these kind of like lesser known middle size, you know, brands. And now those are going away too. Oh, okay. Loose fitting crop tops have drop shoulders, long sleeves, rib knit trim, and an optional crew neckline or hoodie. Optional crew neckline? Oh, I mean you get to pick between one or the other? Okay. High rise leggings have spiral panels, waistband with elastic stitch shims and link variations. So that's not the fabric. That's, oh, those are stitch lines. Huh. Why is she wearing high heels? Give me a freaking break. Come on. At least put her in a wedge, not a stiletto. That might be somewhat more believable. Vogue has a funny sense of humor, I tell you what. Okay, so, sweat, it's a hoodie. It's a cropped hoodie and a cropped sweatshirt. Vogue style. Um, drop shoulder, like not a raglan like usual. Um, drop shoulder to give it that more relaxed look. Literally a pull on. You do have the eyelets, you know, with the drawstring here. And then this little, gosh, how do you even keep your pattern pieces straight? Can you imagine what these 
these little pattern pieces look like. She looks ridiculous in those shoes. I'm just going to, this pattern gets a zero for that, just for that styling alone. Like, why is that not good enough? That biker short is so cute. A cute little sneaker, monochrome, very chic. You don't have to put a girl in high heels to make her seem dressy. Although she's serving. Like, she's like, you know what? Give me what? What? Stop, 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 stop. I can't. They changed her shoes, y'all. They put her in ankle. Oh my God. I'm going to throw up. Okay. Let's just keep it knee up. And we're not, I'm just going to cover the bottom with my hand because the shorts do something for the booty area. If you don't, I have a booty. I don't need a lot of help there. But if you don't, I think this is going to give you, you know, more than you actually have. It's going to look real juicy down there. And then, yeah, this just looks normal, I guess. Maybe a little bit. I mean, it's oversized. That's what all the girls want. So, okay, there she is in her high heels. But, yeah, well, I don't know. Now her butt looks a little bit small. It looks like she has no butt now. So, I don't know. But, like, imagine what this pattern piece looks like. It comes down like this and then wraps around the front of her. Back to over here. Weird. Okay, yeah, line drawings are fine. I think I'll just stick with my basic biker shorts. I don't know that I need all these swirls and stuff. It might be more trouble than it's worth. Loose fitting, oh wait, did I read that already? No, loose fitting crop top has dropped shoulders. I think I was so distracted by the high heels. Crop top has dropped shoulders, long sleeves, rib knit trim, neckline variations. High rise leggings have spiral panels. I did read this because it said optional hoodie hood or okay. Anyways, 75% stretch on the bottoms. Yes, but not view a that's so annoying. It's fine for me because I know not to do that. But if someone's out there making their very first sweatshirt and they think I have, they'd have to use freaking spandex blends for the, for a hoodie. Like that's confusing. Even the term active wear knits is confusing. I can't. It does look like all the sizes come in one extra small to two X. So Oh, oh yeah. The rib trim for A for the little cuffs and little band here. One strip of seven by 64 inch rib trim for B. Oh, why is it? Oh, wait, why is it different? I don't know. It's the same. Oh, two strips and then one strip. Oh God. Okay. I'm getting tired. Um, drawstring cord eyelets elastic. Okay, cool. Yeah, and this, the 2X only, I mean, they're calling it a 26, like 4 to 26, but that's only a hip of 47, which barely fits me. Granted, you probably want negative ease in those shorts, but only like an inch or so. What's funny to me is imagining being there that day, and they're like, yeah, give us this look, and, you know, she's doing taking all her photos, and the photographer's going off, going off, and then somebody... Somebody says, no, 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 wait, 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 take off the sneakers and put on the high heels for me. Like, why? Why? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. Okay, here's our little vintage friend. I'm going to preface this like I do every time I review vintage patterns. I don't sew vintage patterns. So some of the terminology, I don't know what it means. Sometimes they use words that don't make any mean anything to me. So I do my very best. I always ask for the vintage girls out there to help me. So if I come across something that's confusing or don't understand and you're confused by it and you want to understand it, check the comments. Cause a lot of times the 
vintage um, sewers are chiming in to help me, help all of us understand what is happening. Okay. Vintage Vogue circa 1976. Love a 70s look. Loose fitting. Love that. Tent shape. Sleeveless dress below mid knee or floor length. Has front square neckline. Attached bias cape. Pockets inside front seams. And back zipper closing. Self belt holds fullness at weight line. Okay. I get all that. Perfect. I knew every word. So... Similar to how the the hot pink top had stuff sewn into the ruffle the big, that became the sleeve sewn into like the princess seam. This is the same thing. Um, this is giving Donna Karen, right? Aren't we feeling very, don't you see Donna Karen in this? Um, I actually can see myself making this and wearing this like to Target. I know that seems kind of wild because it feels a little bit dressy, but... Um, I think in like the right print and the right weight of fabric, it's just another pretty dress. I kind of love the cape too. And then they were saying something about how the belt holds up the skirt or something. Like it acts as a waist stay. Are they all pointy? Yeah, I don't love... that. Now, it, when looking at this, it feels like a cor coral robe, you know, like from the from choir um, or like a... or like in church. A little a little pastoral, priestly. Um, but you could always just like make that little scoopy. And the belt really did help that too. You know, it's really just a sash tie belt, which aren't my favorite at all. I really hate those. But um, cinching it in helps it not look so much like, you know, a Christmas pageant. Um, fabrics are... Okay, just let's just take note here of the difference between vintage Vogue pattern language and today's I've been reading off the fabrics all this whole video of all the modern patterns look at the difference in this one soft or crisp fabrics such as matte jersey crepe crepe de chine chalet pongee lightweight wool crepe it's not a ton more information but it definitely will steer you in the right direction right? It's a little bit more helpful. And certainly there's more than three fabric recommendations. Um, eight to 26, but it's very loose fitting, like very loose fitting. So seven yards of fabric, my goodness, for the long one. I mean, five for the short one. It's that cape, man, that bias cut cape. Whew. It's like a whole other garment in and of itself. All right. And then we've got one little piece of menswear. Um, I've had so many guys coming, taking sewing lessons for me, in-person sewing lessons. And they're always like, where can I get patterns that like I would actually wear? And I, I try and send them to the big four, um, to, to Norris and to all the guys that are doing the Nomi patterns. And some of them they actually do like, but Norris's patterns can be a little bit too uh, too fashion-y for the guys in Charlotte. You know, the guys in Charlotte want to blend in. Nobody's trying to stand out really. Um, so even though sometimes can be, I try to talk somebody into those diaper sweatpants. Anyways, I'm getting on a tangent and he was like, no, I'm, I would never wear those. And I'm like, come on, they're so cool. This is, this, this is a wedding singer's outfit. Who's, who's going to make that? What guy is wearing a white cropped blazer? What guy is wearing a long line blazer in freaking electric blue? Come on. I, I guess maybe I didn't used to care so much about the menswear because I didn't have to. But now that I, I see the struggle that guys are going through, now I'm like, I'm taking it personal. <laughs> um, 
we got to do better for the men because otherwise they're going to quit. They won't stay. They won't keep sewing if they can't find things that they like, or things that they'll actually wear. They're going to buy one or two patterns, make a few versions of them, get bored and quit. Because <sighs> I even had a guy today asking me about making a seersucker suit. And I'm like, a thousand percent we could do it. And I'm thinking Vogue obviously would have like, you know, the coolest tailoring. But I'm not going to show him this. He'll fire me. Ugh. All right. Peak lapel, shoulder pads, front extending to side back. That's kind of cool. No side seams, welt pockets inside and out, double vent back, length variations, interfacing and line, two piece sleeves with button vent. I'm sure that the line drawings are going to be okay. And if we just make this like a normal length and a normal color, it would be fine ish. But it's still a little, it's a little 80s. It's a little boxy for the guys. And this guy has a freaking sheer shirt on. Who? Vogue. Come on now. I get that you think that you're above everybody, every normal, like, middle class person out there. And that your, your stuff is only cool enough for the coolest of the cool people. But, like, you do sell your patterns all across the country. Small cities, small towns even. Like, this just feels... Like, a joke. If I showed this to one of my guy students, I don't even know. But some cool things that about it are this front piece, like they were saying. This goes up and over. There's no side seam. Up and over the shoulder to the back. What? No. The pose. What's wrong with his hand? Like, no. Okay, so it goes up and over. Isn't that what it said? Up and over becomes center side back? Oh, the front becomes the side back. Okay, so the front wraps around this way, not over the shoulder, but around the side. And that's where you get your double vents. The, the fit of the back looks great. Even though it's got this really ex super extra long shoulder length. For no reason other than to be Rick Ross. And or a wedding singer, like I said before. So, there they are. I said line drawings are going to look pretty normal. And they do. But, oh man. Linen blends, men's suiting, cotton blends. And then contrast satin. Three quarter inch shoulder pads. That's... Usually, I think I do like half inch at most, so those are a little bit extra. All right, well, it's either like love or hate for me. There are very few patterns in the middle. Um, the ones I liked, I really liked. The ones I hated, I really hated. Um, very polarizing collection, I think. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. I can see a lot of you saying that you didn't like any of them. I can, I'm already predicting that. Um, but hopefully some of you are with me and can see the vision in some of these um, and see it fitting in your lifestyle more importantly. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Leave your, leave your comments, commentary in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today, y'all. I will see you all very soon. Bye.